but next five wanna give you a solution. Right now, today, that five is up. There's no more. I'm giving you lies. You're not average. You're not black. You're not Jamaican. You're from the 12 times of Israel. To give a warning. We're not judging you, we're ready. What have we seen anything? Have we seen anything that has changed our people? Changed our neighborhood? Alright, give me Deuteronomy 10 and 12. Because as an Israelite man, I heard the officer had to ask you a question. He had to ask you uh, what your nationality was according to the Bible and what tribe you came from. And you weren't really sure. This is something that you you should know. Just like just like in the world, you would know that you're so-called uh, Jamaican or so-called from the Caribbean. Yeah. You should know this stuff. Right. This this should be taught to you from a youth. So we're gonna get what the Most High God requires of you. Read up. The Book of Deuteronomy, chapter ten and verse twelve. Read up. And now Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? So what does the God what does God require of you as an Israelite man, as an Israelite woman, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? He the most high God wants to require something of you, okay? Read out. But to fear the Lord thy God. To fear, to fear the Lord thy God. Do you know how to fear the Lord? Yes, by respecting, by respecting his commandments, get the fear. Psalms chapter 119 and 1 uh, 120. Because we don't bring out everything according to the scriptures. We don't do mouth service out here. Right. We about this work. Right. We need young brothers like you on this side of the sign about that work out here pushing this with us. That's right. You understand? Because right now is the greatest time. Because it's the awakening of the 12 tribes of Israel. Right. Right. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. Afraid of the Most High God's judgments. Go back. To, uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. You have to be afraid. Just like when you're a child, if you if you steal something out of the store, you're afraid of the consequences. Just like when you disrespect your parents, you're afraid of the consequences. Do you respect your father? Yeah. You respect your father, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, boy, look at your face, boy. Hey, hey, that's my guy. Big. I saw nothing but white. Hey, if you fear your father, if he commands you to do something, he says, take out the garbage, you're going to take the garbage out, right? So that means you go, you're supposed to fear the Most High God. That's Read good, from the bro. top again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what doeth the Lord thy God require of thee? Uh -huh. But to fear the Lord thy God. Fear, keep his commandments. To walk in all his ways. In all his ways. His ways are is this, this whole Bible from beginning to end. And to love him. To love him. Do you know how, do you know how to love the Most High God? How you love the Most High God? By following His commandments. By following His commandments. You're 100% correct. But like I said, everything that we do out here, it ain't mouth service. Yeah. We're not going to be like the Christian pastor. Oh, yeah. We're not going to be like none of them. We're going to pull it out, thus says the Lord. That's, That's right. right. We don't do our mouth. You understand? Because yeah, there's a lot of things that the Most High God requires of us as Israelite men. Bring it out. Read. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 3. Uh -huh. For this is the love of God, uh -huh. that we keep his commandments, uh -huh. and his commandments are not grievous. His commandments are not hard. Right. Once you apply yourself, it's not hard. Right. That's right. You understand? Because once you, once you incorporate this lifestyle, man, it's a breeze. Right. Right. Giving up pork was not hard. That's right. right. It's all praises. All praises. All praises. But when you come out of this world, like right now, you don't have on fringes. I heard the officer tell you about fringes. It's not a hard thing to put on fringes. You see, all us brothers out here, we all in one body, one mind, one spirit. That's, That's right. right. You understand? So we all have on fringes because we know. Would you, would you, do you want to be kept out of the kingdom of heaven just because of fringes? Exactly. How would I know that? See, when you came up, you just like a regular brother to me. I wouldn't know that you're an Israelite. I came out of practice. You came out of what? What kind of practice? Baseball. Baseball? Yeah. All right, we'll talk about that in one second, but read. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 59. Bring it up. I thought on my ways, and I turned my feet unto thy testimonies. That means you made a, uh, he made a abrupt U-turn. That means he, he said, damn, 
I'm doing something wrong. I need to, I need to think on my way. And what did he do? I made haste. He made haste. He, that means he didn't waste a moment. He didn't waste any time. He made haste. And delayed not to keep thy commandments. So he didn't delay to keep the Most High God's commandments. Now, you said you just left baseball practice? Okay, y'all got you. You all play games on um the Sabbath? No games on the Sabbath? Okay, all praises, all praises. But you know that um uh, baseball is actually a heathen, a heathenish fashion. Right? Bring it out! Bring it out! Give me um First Maccabees chapter four and verse eight. Bring it out! First, it started nine. Cause a lot of the sports that that we partake in are heathenish fashions, and you know they raise us up from a youth from Pop Warner. They want us to play. Their sports, but we don't raise up in God's laws because from a youth you should have known that you were an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. Yes, sir. You understand? I bet you know how to hit that ball though. I bet they ain't see you nod your head. You like, boy, well, yeah, boy. I'm the next to Andre Dawson out here, boy. Hey, second Maccabees, chapter four, verse nine. Bring it up. But as far as knowing your nationality, you you kind of you didn't really know all your nationality. You said you had to go ask your father. You should never have to ask your father what your nationality is. You told me I was younger. I just forgot. I was like eight. You was eight. You you damn. Near, how old are you now? Nineteen. You nineteen. You're a grown man. Look here, man. You 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 pretty much a grown man. So you should know your nationality. You should know that you have to wear fringes. You should know God's laws. Right. That's right. Read the book of Second Maccabees, chapter four and verse nine. Besides this. He promised to assign an hundred and fifty more, if he might have license to set him up a place of exercise. A place of exercise. Do you know when you go to a place of exercise, what do they call it? What do they call a place of exercise? Sports is a is is something that you exercise, but where do you go to exercise? A field. A, a field, a gym. Read. And for the training up of youth in the fashions of the heathen. So they train us up from a youth to love these sports. Right. They train us up from, from the time we come out the womb, they throw us a ball. But, they say, they say, hit that ball. No? But I got you. It's different. The, the, those times the sports they were playing were the sports they played with the animals and the bears. Oh, uh, not true. Not true. Was sport back in with the Romans. This, is where, this is where the Olympics come from. Olympics, there you go. That's where Olympics started. Olympics it's started then. The Olympics started then. So can I ask you a question? Is 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 America the same as uh is the same as the, oh, no, the so-called Greek? Yeah, America's the new Rome. Yeah. Exactly. The same that you just said it, the new Rome. Yeah. So that means when you partake in their, their sports, that means you're you're still, you're following their fashion. That means you're in agreement with them. Bring it out. That's right. You understand that? I, I'm, you're 19. I, I, are you? Are, why, why? Why are you? Are you trying to play on a professional team? Yeah. So that means you gotta play games on the Sabbath. That means you gotta have to break your Sabbath. Right. I, can, I, can you know? you, I know guys that play professional baseball. Read. And write, and write them of Jerusalem by the name of Antiochus, which which when the king had come down to fifteen, verse fifteen, not standing by the honors of their fathers. The honors of your fathers, knowing that you're from the tribe of Benjamin. Knowing that you come from the same tribe as Paul, that you are Israelite according to this Bible. That's right. Knowing that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are your brothers. Right. Knowing that you should be on the other side of this sign with us, right. teaching right. the people, right. not hitting a ball out in the middle of the field. Right. That's right. Not chasing after dreams that are going to destroy you in the end. Right. But liking the glory of the Grecians. Best of all, when you like the glory of the Grecians, best of all, that means you're partaking in their sports. Hey, how you doing, brother? How you doing? I'm doing good. Hey, um, come on close. Come, get out the street. Come on over here. Talk to us, brother. So, real quick, real quick. So you you say you say you play baseball, bro? May I ask you, what's your name, brother? What's your name? First of all, Gene. Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Luke. We are here teaching our people their nationality according to the Bible. We're trying to bring back the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to their true heritage, which is the Israelites of the Bible. That's right. Do you do you see yourself on the sign? Because I see you looking at that sign real hard. Hey, boy, you almost looked through the sign. Hey, all praises. Do you see yourself on the sign? Okay, all praises. So, so who are you according to the Bible? Levi, oh man, you from you from a strong tribe. You from the same tribe as Moses, That's right. Aaron, 
Do you know that the blood that flow your the blood that flows through your veins through the Israelites' veins is more precious than diamonds and rubies? Yeah. You understand how great you are? Do you understand that, brother? You understand that? Hey, come come in. We ain't gonna bite. I know you see all this purple and gold out here. I know it's a scary sight. But don't be like, you know, we ain't gonna bite you. So check this out. So you know, do you know your do you know the uh the so-called things that happened to the, the Haitians? You know your history. Uh, okay, so real quick, this question for both of y'all. How did we get over to this side of the earth? Bring it up. We're taking here as slaves. We're taking here as slaves yeah. on ships. You agree with that? Yeah. Slavery. Uh, okay, slavery. When you were in school, did they teach you about slavery? Oh, no. no, they didn't teach you too much about your slavery. But we're here today to teach the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that they're the Israelites of the Bible. That's and that slavery, the Most High God wrote about our slavery. He wrote about our conditions. He wrote about everything that we go through today. He wrote about it in the Bible. Right. So we're going to bring it out bring it out in the Bible, and we're going to bring out a few laws, too. You That's understand? Right. Matter of fact, right. before we even bring that out, I just want to I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Give me 1 Corinthians. You know what I want. Because I want to make sure we're on the same page right now, okay? Bring it up. You know what I want? Yes, All right. So, right now, the, Christ, you, you believe in Christ? I'm asking you, do you believe in Christ? You don't believe in Christ? You, you don't believe in what? Pharisees? Pharisees. Pharisees. Oh, so you think he's a, a false god then? You think he's a, 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 well, I'm not going to say a god. You think he's a, 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 a you, think, you think he's fiction. You don't think he's real. You think, you think, oh, wow. And, and you, do you agree with him? Oh, all praises, all praises. But you, do you believe in the Most High God? I just want to. Yeah, I in a lot of yeah. All right. A God. A God. There's only one God. That's the God of the Israelites. Yes, right. You understand? Read this. The Book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven and verse three. Bring it up. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ, uh -huh. and the head of the woman is the man. So the head of the woman is the man, and the head, the head of every man is Christ. All right? And the head of Christ is God. Read. Every man praying or prophesying. Right now, we're out here prophesying. We're reading out of the Holy Scriptures. You understand? Yeah. All right, read. Having his head covered. Having your head covered. Dishonoreth his head. Dishonoreth his head. So right now, when the scriptures are coming out, what should you do? What should you do when the scriptures are coming out? When the scriptures are coming out of the Bible, what should you do? Read it again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. All praises. All praises. All praises. All praises. Give me Leviticus 21. All right. So this is for you too. It's for you too, because I know baseball players love to do this. So I know you might, you might, you might be down with, you might be down with it, you know. So we're gonna find out if you're down with the Greekish fashions, and we're gonna find out if you're down with the Greekish fashions too. All right, bro. Yeah. All right, read. The Book of Leviticus, chapter twenty-one and verse five. Read. They shall not make baldness upon their head. They should not do what? Make baldness upon their head. So we're not supposed to get a Steve Harvey, we're not supposed to get a Michael Jordan, right. and we're not supposed to do the Egyptian thing. Right. What do you do if it's hereditary, though? Hereditary? <laughs> Read it. Uh, matter of fact, get Leviticus 13 and um, 39, I believe it is. Bring it out. We're going to show you what you do when you got a, when you, when you got a ball, when you're going ball. Because there ain't nothing wrong with going ball. You understand? We got a lot of brothers out here that's going ball. Right. Do you see any ball heads like MJ? Nah, you don't see it going on. You know what happens when you get a bald head like MJ? It's cause you're scared. You're scared to let it show that you're aging. Right. Or either you're trying to keep the keep the women on your side or something like that. You know? Right. Right. You got the bald head. <laughs> all, right, all praises. All right, well, <laughs> sex appeal. All praises. <laughs> hey, we're gonna destroy that. All that. All right. Read. Yeah, 40. The book of Leviticus, chapter 13 and verse 40. And the man whose hair is falling off his head. So if your hair falling out your, off your head, all right, read. He is bald, yet he is clean. You're clean. You're clean. Right. But that doesn't mean shave your hair. Read. And he that has his hair falling off 
from the point of his head toward his face, he is forehead bald, yet he is clean. So your forehead bald, you good. You good. Hey, you shouldn't even be worried about nobody else as long as you good with the Most High God. Because if you, don't, if you don't do what the Most High God says do, you know, you riding down this street, you could fall off your skateboard and a car could hit you? Right. That's called, that's called punishment. The right. Most High God, he don't play about his. The, the Most High God is a man of war. Right. He not out here for peace. He not out here for us to sing Kumbaya with the nations. He's out here to tell you, thus says the Lord, repent. Right. Return. Right. Return, to, return to your nationality as a Levi. Because right. you are not a Haitian. Right. You are not a so-called Benjamin. You are a so-called, uh, uh, you're not a so-called... West India, your so-called Benjamin. Yeah, you understand? Right. Read Leviticus 21 and 5. Bring the book in. of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. Uh -huh. They shall not make baldness upon thy head. Uh -huh. Neither shall they shave off the corner of thy beard. So right now, it looks like you shaved off the corner of your beard. Do you, you, you shave your face, bro? Oh, you, oh, 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 okay, okay. You don't grow your hair. Okay, all right. I understand. Okay, you're trying to. All right, at least you're trying. Don't shave that. That little bit of try right there. Let that thing grow. And you, brother, you, I see you shave, because, uh, yeah, you should not shave. Let me give a little testimony real quick before I leave. I'm going to leave. Uh-huh. Because he said you let him clean him inside, right? But when I was, like, 17 years old, uh -huh. I was toward guns. Full to me, right? So someone called the cops. I didn't know. I'm talking about nine people that showed up to the house with guns drawn. I, I put a gun and everything was dead. And my older brother came to the house, and he thought we were playing. They had guns drawn, and he pointed at the cops. Now, how many guys do you see getting out of this and killed with a half toy gun? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Pointed at the cop with a black toy gun, didn't be killed. Yeah, and, and in right, this right. day and age, you see us getting shot down left and right. Don't you agree, brother? That's how I knew it was on the side of Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to prove, according to the scripture, just like he said, there is a God. Go to Deuteronomy 28, and we're going to show you that there is a God and that the only God could have told you this. You understand, brother? Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. Before you get that, let me get uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. This is for you. What's your name? Huh? Eli Akim. Eli Akim. Let's get that. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. Pay attention to this. The book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. This is a parable that Christ gave us. Read. But of that day of our... So, but of the day and hour, nor no man, no not the angels of heaven. So nobody knows when Christ is going to return. Because the soldier brought out uh, Psalms 119 verse 60. Make haste. Read. But my father only. Uh -huh. But is the day of Noah where he was so shall also the coming of the son of man be. Noah was building that ark for years. Preaching, telling people, look, destruction is coming. Repent. Read. For as in the days that were before the flood, there were eating and drinking. It was just like any other normal day. People buying, shopping, selling. It's just like any other day. Read. Marrying and giving in to marriage until the day of Noah entered into ark. Let you know, if you marry your daughter, is there, is there any war going on or anything like that? Is there anything close to home that's tragic if you're marrying your daughter off to somebody else? If marriages are happening, can you can you can you marry your daughter while your son out in war like it's like it's all gravy? Nah. So it's gonna be like any other normal day, we right? and and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Cause just like when Christ come, nobody gonna know. It's gonna be like any it's gonna be like any peaceful day and boom. We right? so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two in the Two in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Zechariah 13 and verse 9 tells you out of every three of us, two of us is going to die. That's right. Read. Two women shall be, shall be grinding at the mill, and one shall be taken and the other left. Uh -huh. Which, watch therefore, for the, for, watch therefore, ye know not... You know not the hour your Lord doeth come. So it says, watch therefore. When it's telling you to watch, it's not saying just to stay still. It's telling you to apply God's commandments. Because right. you don't know when Christ is going to return, read. Right? Right. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, in what, in watch the, in watch the thief would come. If you knew somebody was about to break in your house, 
say for some reason you can tell the future. I know at 11.30, this guy gonna try to break in my house. Are you gonna be prepared? You'll be ready, right? Got it. Christ is telling you the same thing. Be prepared for when I come back. Because if you not, if you know he's gonna come at 11.30, you ought to prepare for it. What's gonna end up happening? He's gonna rob you. He's gonna take what's really what's for you, the kingdom of heaven. Watch this, read on. But know this, that if the good man of the house, tell me, what it means to be a good man? Give me that, what's good? What it means to be a good man? Well, let's see, let's see if it pairs up with the Bible. Because we know at the end of the day, I'm going to take God's words on what a good man is compared to any other man. Right? Because... Watch this. We're going to read what a good man is. First, you just got to define the word good. Read. Romans chapter 12. Say uh, 7 and 12. Read that. Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. What is good? The book of Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore, the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So a good man is somebody who's applying what? God's laws. Because a good man won't commit adultery. Good man won't sell drugs to his people. A good man won't rob his neighbor. You understand that? That's what a good man does. A good man will take care of his household. Love his neighbor as he loves himself. That's a good man. Now go back to it in Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. You should be down to like probably like 41 or 42. So a good man, he'll be watching. He'll know, okay, I'll be applying God's commandments. So when Christ returns, I'm on the safe side. I'll make it to the kingdom of heaven. So you knew, how long you knew you was an Israelite? Huh? Since you was born. How about you? So 17 years old. All right. So compare yourself according to the Bible. Are you those good men watching and prepared? Why well, won't see a border of blue fringes on you? Right. You understand? Yeah. You're not. You're not there yet. Right. Let you know when Christ returns, would you make it to the kingdom of heaven? You wouldn't. Right. Which, which, let's get it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Matter of fact, yeah. Amos chapter 9, verse 10. Yeah. Amos yeah. chapter 9 and verse 10. Yeah. You gotta understand it. It's a hey, you. You playing with fire, bro. You playing because you say you knew since you was born. You should have known you were supposed to keep God's commandments. Why well, just read that? The book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 10. All the sinners. No, some. All the sinners. What is a sinner, brother? What's your name? Gene. Gene. Levi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you already know. Everybody named Gene over there, man. Good moon. Hey, bro. Oh, all right. Gee, read that part again. The book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 10. All the sinners of my people. What is a sinner? Right. We'll, we'll get you the definition. You got it? First John chapter 3, verse 4. Just to, just to bring it out, just so you can hear it, so you can understand what that verse is saying. Because the Bible tells you precept upon precept, right? Oh, hold on, we're going to bring this out. So watch this, read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So back to that, Amos. So sin is the breaking of God's commandments, right? Remember, that good man would have been watching. That good man is the man that keeps God's commandments. Right. So when that house broken up, well, I'm prepared. I'm straight. Watch this, read. The book of Amos, chapter 9 and verse 10. Bring it up. All, sinners of, all sinners of my people. Read it from the top again. All sinners of my people, everyone that's breaking God's commandments of the children of Israel, we shall die by the sword. Shall die by the sword. What's your question? Power. That's all it means. That's that's the, that's the only translation. Well, I'm I'm not here with semantics with words in anything. When it comes to the God of the Bible, when it's when it's defining the word God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that's the one we're talking about. That, that, the, the fine, where, where it says that? Give me um, the one in Psalms. Yeah, 138 and verse 2. Give me that in Psalms. Let me show you what the name of God is. 
Watch this. You know the name of God. How does that get you into the kingdom of heaven? Right. Show me. It will actually... His ways are keeping the commandments of God. And watch this. This is how we know his name. Read it. The book of Psalms, chapter 138 and verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy, and for thy truth. For thy has magnified thy word. Thy what? Thy word. Thy what? Thy word. Thy what? Thy word above thy name. So hit the word of God is above his name. You are praying, you are praying the commandments of God. Forget the name. That name function. Yeah, forget the name. At the end of the day, watch this. Give me all the one in Revelations. Revelation 19 and 19 and 13. Or is it 10? If you call him God, then can't you call him anything else? I'm gonna use I'm gonna use what the scriptures say. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the script what the scriptures say. When you hear when you hear Jehovah, when you hear I am, those are just titles. Right. God is not, you, you know you know the one where it says um he's gonna give us the pure name the pure language read yeah, the the book of Revelation chapter nineteen and verse ten watch this pay attention to this I fell at his feet the book of Revelation chapter nineteen and verse fourteen verse thirteen and and he was clothed with a vesture dripped in blood and his name is called the word of God his name is called what the word of God. Before we just read that, he magnified the word above his name. And he just let us know his name is called the word of God. That's so right. when it comes to the Bible, what his name is, thou shalt not steal. Right. Thou shalt not kill. Right. Love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Right. That's his name. What was the name they called him back then? That was a title. Watch this. Read that. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Watch this. Watch this. Because to call upon his name, this is how we're going to call upon his name when he returns. Watch this. Read that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 3 and verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to pray. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms and pour upon them my indignation. Even all my fierce anger and all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Remember, that's, that's, when, that's when Christ returns. That's when that good man would have been prepared. Right. Read on. For then I will turn to the people and, 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 and pure language. So we don't have that pure language yet. That's when he returns, read. That they may all come upon the name. That they may all what? All come upon the name. That they may all what? Come upon Call. the name. Call. Read it again. They will all call upon the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Serve him with one consent. We don't know yet because we don't have the pure language. You understand? No. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Watch this. Hold your peace. Just take your time. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Because in the book of Enoch, does it have laws? Bring it out. It does not. It don't have not one law in it. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 12. And and further, and further, be these my sons. By thee. By these my sons, be admonished of the making of many books. There is no end. And much studying is a weariness of the flesh. Um, Isaiah 34 and verse 16. It says, hey, you, you can study all these books. It's a weary of the flesh. The book of Enoch was not put together by God. I'm going to tell you straight. It was not. Because if he did, he would have put the spirit on King James when he translated the Bible that had to be in there for us. That's right. When the 1611 Bible was translated, the book of Enoch was not in it. Right. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Read out. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Huh? No one of these shall come, shall fail. No sh now. None shall want her mate. You can't make the Holy Bible with the book of Enoch. How we know there's no laws in it. Your ancestors did. Let's get that. We're going we to show him. No, he did it. He was authorized to translate it. He is not the author of the Bible. He's not, he's, he's not the author of it. All right, check. Yeah, watch this. Get that. Psalm 78 and 11. Watch this and get the one where it says. Watch this. It, it don't matter. The word's still going to go out. The word's still going to go out. 
At the end of the day, you have to keep God's commandments. That's, That's right. the point of it. All people do not want to keep God's commandments. That's right. That was the main part. He avoided everything that had to do with God's commandments so he could receive eternal life. Right. He want to argue about the name. Right. If our people had the name since the beginning, why did they go into captivity? Right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.